Cool. OK. Uh, yeah, so like I said, I'm Jordan. Uh, I work at Block. Uh, for those who don't know, Block owns Cash App, Square, Tidal, uh, and so we're kind of unifying these brands together. Uh, for the last like two and a half years or so, I was primarily focused on Square as a product. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my bread and butter. Uh, but lately, I've been moving over to working on Goose, which Michael kind of just demoed for me. Uh, so I'm really thankful for that. Uh, but we're going to see it again uh, in a moment, but with our, uh, our GUI version. So uh, what I have on the agenda for this talk is I'm going to talk to you all about Codename Goose. Um, and in particularly what it is, what it can do for you, and then specifically showing how it can be used for MCP testing. Um, and then I'm going to talk about Square's MCP server, uh, which was built as part of a Hack Week project uh, that later got shipped to Prod. Um, and then I'm going to give a demo of that Square MCP server. So what is Codename Goose? Uh, so this is a little bit different than what Michael was just showing. Uh, this is the, uh, the GUI version of it, uh, which I personally prefer to use. But I kind of feel like a pleb now watching how Michael is flying through the CLI version. Um, but either way, uh, both versions of it are uh, going to run locally on your computer. Uh, they're both open source. And they're both LLM agnostic. And it supports extensions, like Michael had just shown that he connected an extension uh, for his MCP server that he just built. And he just kind of did it on the fly there. Um, so this here, I was just, I'm showing how to connect an, an extension in the GUI version. Uh, it's very similar to what Michael just did. You're going to give it a name. You're going to you know, say if, uh, what it is that you're running, if it's using uh, standard input output or server sent events. Um, and then you're going to give it the command for, uh, in this case, I cloned the Square MCP server. I have it on my machine locally here. Uh, and I'm basically just giving it the command that it's going to run to connect to that server. Uh, and then I'm putting in some environment variables here. And so uh, kind of, I, I didn't realize that one of the speakers was going to be talking about auth for MCP, because uh, I'm sure, as we know, uh, that, that is a tricky problem. But during the hack week for this project, uh, which took place back in March, uh, I, I, was, I was the one tasked with figuring out auth for the project. Uh, and I remember reading GitHub issues that were getting updated that day about people arguing about what the way to do auth was going to be and if you were going to be storing tokens on the machine or if you needed to be storing tokens on the server um, and you know, how the OAuth flows were going to work. Uh, so we just kind of yellowed it. And uh, <laughs> we started with doing uh, just the uh, environment variables. And I'm sorry, uh, the screen was doing stuff as I was talking. I basically just asked Goose to read and tell me about my Square locations. Uh, and so it went and ran, connected to the uh, Square MCP server, and uh, pulled that information down about uh, my location data for my Square seller. OK, so what about the Square MCP server? Um, so I'm just going to give us some context here. Uh -huh, all right. well, you know, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So. Um, <laughs> Yeah, huh? yeah, right, right, exactly. Um, so on March 12th is when we submitted our Hack Week proposal for the Square MCP server. Uh, on April 15th, our team ended up winning. Uh, and because we won, we then had to be tasked with actually making this thing work in a production environment as opposed to a very hacky thing that we had put together in that short period of time. Uh, on the 25th, we got it together. We open sourced it. Jack Dorsey tweeted about it, which was very cool. Um, exciting moment for myself. Uh, and then... May 21st, uh, we got the uh, like actual MCP server stood up on the Square Developer homepage. So developers, when they go and log into uh, their developer platform, they can see that, oh, here's all this information about this uh, MCP server that they can connect to. And, and we ended up changing the server to do server sent events. And it's all hosted, actually, with Cloudflare. So um, yeah. So as we were building the project, uh, a common thing that happens with MCP servers, and maybe a lot of you have ran into this, uh, is that you have a ton of tools, actually. Like your API platform is, is massive. And uh, the, the LLM, you know, you, like, you get your MCP server built, and you're like, OK, cool. I like, dropped in my, uh, uh, my, my uh, API spec that is going to show all of my services and stuff. I've got it all to script. And the LLM gets totally overwhelmed with, OK, what are all these options? You know, so I'm saying, like, hey, I want you to create an invoice for John Doe. And the LLM would do something like, OK, I'm going to just call the create invoice endpoint, because that makes sense. And then it gets an error because there's no customer named John Doe. So it's like, oh, OK, well, let me try again. I'm going to go create a customer. And then it's going to you know, try to put invoice information on there. And then it's going to fail again. And it's going to kind of keep doing this. 
And through that, uh, you end up having this like unpredictable uh, interaction that's happening as you're trying to use the MCP server. Um, and so the analogy I kind of think about it as is like, you've hired a new person at your company, you've given them access to your Slack channel, and you've just said, all the information's in there, so why don't you go build this feature? Uh, you just ask the right questions and you'll, you'll get there. Uh, and obviously it's like horribly inefficient, uh, but I'm also guilty of totally doing that to some coworkers. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah, so uh, how did we get around this problem, right? This was uh, to get this thing into production, we needed something that was, uh, something that we could replicate, uh, we, that we could feel confident that when developers would go to use the MCP server, uh, that they would get an expected result when asking uh, the LLM to do something on their behalf. And so uh, the solution that we came up with was uh, using layers. Uh, and I have to credit my coworker Richard Moot uh, for this joke of ogres, onions, layers. You know, MCP servers are like ogres, which are like onions. Um, and so that's yeah, for all my Shrek fans out there. Um, yeah, so this first layer that we built into our MCP server is this discovery layer. So the first tool that the LLM is uh, told to go look into is this get service info tool. And basically this tool will, uh, the LLM is gonna be like, okay, I got asked to go create an invoice. Uh, I'm gonna go look up some information about what invoices are and how they're defined within Square's platform. So this tool, it's gonna make that call, it's gonna get a bunch of metadata back, and it's gonna be like, okay, cool, like I understand that the invoices tool is to be used to like list invoices, create invoices, send invoices to customers. Uh, it kind of gets an idea of just general surroundings uh, of what that service does. The next layer it's gonna call is like, okay, once all that's returned successfully is gonna be, okay, I need to get the type info for uh, this service. And so it's gonna look up and it's gonna see, okay, so the invoice endpoint, it's expecting these types of parameters, ex expecting these values, um, you know, like I need to have identifiers that are strings, I need to have uh, values that are Boolean, whatever. And so we, we call this the planning phase because it's kind of putting together how it's gonna call this API endpoint um, with, with the context that's been loaded uh, into the LLM. So then the last step that we say to do is this execution step and, the, and that tool is named make API request. And <clears throat> basically just takes all that context and it says okay, now you can go ahead and call that API endpoint with the information that you have and it's gonna go through and successfully have the things put together that it needs to do. Um, and so there will be some bouncing around between uh, layer one and two as uh, you, know, you can imagine an invoice requires a customer as I showed earlier. So in that layer two, as it's reading about you know, what is the type data that I'm trying to put into, uh, there's a type value for an order or for a customer and so it's gotta go back up to layer one to say okay, I need to load in more context about um, uh, about that service for orders or, or customers or whatever. So just to kind of like big picture of what I've kind of covered here is just, uh, you know, you the user are gonna, you can ask, you know, create me an invoice for John Doe. Uh, that's gonna go into Goose and in my case of uh, kind of how I'm presenting here, uh, there's gonna be an LLM connected that has access to using tools uh, and then the Square MCP extension will be there and as that question goes through, it's gonna discover, it's gonna plan, and then it's gonna execute. So uh, I, I kind of crafted this challenge here. I'm also using it to highlight a bit of how Goose can interact with files on your computer. Uh, but so I'm basically gonna ask Goose uh, to read through a text file uh, and to create invoices for me. You know, you can imagine as a Square seller, you might be on the phone with people that you're working with and you're trying to collect information kind of scrappily into a text file, and then you're like, okay, um, <clears throat> I, I, I just want you to go create these invoices. I don't want to go manually do them in my seller account, whatever. Uh, and so there's, there's actually quite a few uh, API calls that have to happen in order to even create just one invoice, uh, which is first to check the customer endpoint to see if that customer and that email address exists. If it doesn't, then we need to make another call to create it. Uh, and then uh, we need to create the order for the invoice based on how much money that the invoice is gonna require. Uh, and just you know any other information that we want to put in around that. And then we need to create the invoice itself. And when we create the invoice, we're going to put that order ID onto the invoice. And then lastly, we're going to publish the invoice, which is what sends it to, uh, to the user. So, or I guess to the customer. Uh, but, so this is the part where I'm going to demo it. And hopefully this just works, right? 
Uh, I've not really demoed AI stuff live. I usually lean on video, but Michael encouraged me to do it live. So if it breaks, I blame Michael. Um, but yeah, so this is that notes uh, just that I kind of have here. You know, it's just like I need to build these folks, you know, sooner than later. Uh, I've kind of made up some people and I'm using uh, an email address that's going to connect back to my own email so we can see that it worked. Uh, and then I also stuck Mike, I stuck Michael on here because I saw him kind of just put out his email address just a moment ago. So I was like, all right, I'm going to include him in the presentation as well. So um, I have three invoices here that I want to create. Uh, one is like kind of mentioning some consulting work for last week of 10 hours at, you know, $150 per hour. Uh, another one for a website redesign project, which we agreed to this price, and uh, you know some logo work or whatever, and then uh, for Michael for driving to the Bay Area, 120 bucks. So, <laughs> um, and then is this big enough? No, it's not. Just going to kind of zoom in on that really quick so that y'all can see. And so uh, I just I have Goose open here. I've already connected the Square extension, um, or the Square MCP server, I should say. And I'm going to say, hey, Goose, uh, in this current directory, which uh, when you use the GUI version, you can like open Goose in a specific directory, so it kind of has that knowledge of where it's at. Uh, and I'm just going to say, there's a text file with some notes I took on some invoices I need to send out from my Square account. Can you do this for me? And now we pray. <laughs> Okay, awesome. So first thing that Goose does is that it's going to run a command to see if it can find that text file. And it goes, okay, cool, I found the file, I'm going to read it. Uh, and then it says, okay, I can see that there's three invoices in here, let me help you create these using Square's API. Um, so then the first thing that we can see here is actually that it calls that tool to get the service info for the invoice. Uh, then it calls the type info, so that's layer one, layer two. Uh, and then it's looking at uh, the response to understand the invoice creation structure. But then, oh, I need to create an order first. So now it's going back to that layer one to get the service info for the order, uh, and then figuring out the type information it needs for the order. Uh, it actually also needs to get the location info, because I didn't provide that anywhere in here. So it needs to assess which location for my square seller it's going to uh, call to. Uh, and then, yep, and then as it's going here, it says, oh, okay, the customers don't exist either, so I need to go ahead and create these customers. And it's just going to kind of keep spitting these out. So. Uh, we've got our first customer for Sarah Chen, then Mike Rodriguez, and now Michael Watson. And now that it has those customers, it's going to go ahead and create orders uh, for each of those invoices. And kind of like Michael said, this is that we kind of just get to wait as it's uh, going through and doing these things. Um, But yeah, so, and I, I, I guess while it's kind of doing this, I'll continue to narrate instead of just being silent. Um, okay, but yeah, so we can see that it, you know, has this order created. It figured out that it needed to charge Sarah Chen for $1,500, which is great. Um, needed to charge Mike Rodriguez for $3,000 based on the work in that file. Uh, and then hopefully this last one is going to say that, it, yeah, $120 for driving to the Bay Area to Michael. Um, and so, yeah, the, just kind of the beauty of this is just, uh, especially because Square's developer platform is just so, uh, there's just a lot of breadth to it, and a lot of these APIs are dependent on each other. We really needed a way for the LLM to just load in its context, to understand how to call these APIs in the order that they need to happen so that the, uh, the proper entity entities exist when it tries to go do these things. And so now we're creating invoices, uh, and just as those requests are finishing, uh, there should be one more request afterwards to uh, publish the invoice, which is going to ultimately do the email. Um, yep. So now it's just figuring out the type info for how it does the publishing of that. And then, Michael, if you're there and if you have access to your uh, email at any point, would love to see that you received an invoice from Square <laughs> specifically to me. <laughs> Yeah, that's okay. I'll, I'll go ahead and have Goose cancel it here at the end of the presentation, but uh, oh, and we need to relaunch Chrome within three days. Okay, great. So I have, uh, I have three invoices here uh, that it's telling me for my Square account. I have the two, and there's Michael invoiced. So, yeah. Um, and yeah, that kind of wraps up my presentation here. Thank you all so much for listening. Uh, I, I'll be around uh, after the event, so feel free to come grab my ear and chat and whatnot. Um, just wanted to link to some resources. I, I really don't know what the best way to share any links to you. Like, I don't know if you want to do a Google Drive with the slides so people can look at it afterwards or, 
you know, whatever, we'll figure it out. But I just, I just want to link to uh, our GitHub for the MCP service. So you can go clone that. Uh, you can go look at how we laid out these tools and how we did that layering. And you know, you could ask Goose to then apply that to your own MCP server. And you don't have to do any of the work yourself. Um, and then, yeah, just some other links to uh, the codename Goose project, our Discord, and all that. Um, yeah, well, awesome. Thank you all so much. Thank you.